Welcome to episode 76 of Masters of the Forge. My name is Adam, and with me is Jason. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm, at least I'm pretty sure it's 76. It's all a blur to me. I think it's 76. That sounds about right. All right, cool. <laughs> so, um, this, as promised, this episode is about the curse of the wolfen in the lore. And uh, we... Uh, we went through and read the book, and, and Jason read some of the short stories that were going with it, um, and uh, that's what we're going to be talking about today, and then next week we'll talk about the uh, rules that came with it, and the missions, and uh, then we're going to have a couple weeks off for Christmas and New Year's, and we'll be back in January to start a whole new year. Uh, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, or bleary-eyed and a little hungover. I'm not sure which. Can it be both? It certainly can. <laughs> what have you been up to, Jason? What have you been up to in the hobby? Uh, let's see. What do I got here? Um, hey, I finished that Venator. Woohoo! Woot woot! He looks good too. Yeah. Uh, she. I guess it's a tank. I. It. It doesn't care where the blood comes from. Uh, you know, <laughs> it'll run you over. It doesn't matter. It'll shoot up your mm -hmm. super heavy. It doesn't care. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, I finished that and then I took a picture and put on the one hour a night Facebook page. And then after I took the picture, I realized I still had some details that, uh, I hadn't caught. <laughs> and so, yeah, pi yeah. Pic posting pictures on a forum sure has a great way of displaying all your errors. Yeah, like I'd forgotten to put in all the uh, <laughs> oculars on the uh, on the sponsons and whatnot. I'm like, oh yeah, I, I kind of need to do that. And then I started mm -hmm. looking at it. I'm like, okay, I can either call this done and come back later, or I'm going to keep working on this for the next two months because it has a ton mm -hmm. of detail. I mean, it's just kind of obnoxious and awesome. Mm -hmm. um, so I just did the oculars and a couple of small things and. Uh, it's done. Split the difference. Yeah, yeah. Nice. I'll come back to That's it later. That's good. Uh, let's yeah. see. That's how I feel about my Thunderhawk. Yeah. My Orc Thunderhawk. It's clearly kind of not done, and uh, but I'm going to come back to that later and fill in a bunch of details and put it on a base. Yeah. But, yeah it's, I, was, I was so fatigued at that point, I'm like, I got to stop working on this. Yeah, and it's those Forge World pieces, and so you... Go through and do the work, and you put it down, and you look over and go, oh, I didn't see that detail part. All right, well, let me fix that. Put it back down, and you see something else, and it's just kind of never-ending almost. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. uh, so that was the Venador. And then um, I've mentioned that it rains a lot here, and mm. it does. Um, I have not watered my lawn ever, and hmm. it's still quite nice. Um so I sometimes have to prime, like if you'll notice, I'll build and I'll build, like since I've lived down here, I just build a lot and then, you know, I haven't primed so much. Well, yesterday I primed an entire uh, Raven Guard army <laughs> 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 because it, I've just been sitting on it waiting for the weather to break and it finally broke yesterday for a few hours and so um, I primed up a ton of things, including some Prospero Marines and a bunch of Kalth Mark IV Marines, and mm -hmm. my Masters of the Signal uh, for the Raven Guard, and a bunch of Assault Marines. And I primed another Librarian. That's right. I have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> but he's Raven, he's Raven Guard. He's Raven Guard. He's got a oh, Raven okay. Guard. Oh, okay. That makes it okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. I mean, I, I really don't need another Blood Raven... Uh, librarian because i kind of don't know how many i have you have enough to fill out like two librarius conclaves no i can do more than that oh, oh, oh i'm sorry no. <laughs> <laughs> oh i can i can do one conclave just on bikes oh, oh i do have a, i do have a problem don't i uh, <laughs> um yeah so yeah let's well, let's not talk about that part. Uh, <laughs> but I do have a considerable number of librarians, so it's... Um, I wasn't going to build one for the Raven Guard, but I started thinking about how, well, this is a 30k list, and I can do some really cool narrative things with the Tylos Rubio guy, and 
I'm trying to have one. I'm trying to have. I'm trying to have one army that is a 30k only army. So that's not like, hey, look, here's a bunch of Mark Seven stuff. You know, it's all Mark Four, Mark Six armor. So mm-hmm. that's that's what I'm trying to go for. But uh, let's see what else. Uh, I finished reading the Legacy of Rust series, but we're going to talk about that later. And I started reading um, uh, Book 10 in The Beast Arises. I think it's called The Last Son of Dorn or The Son of Dorn or something like that. So mm-hmm. and, I am way so far behind you on, on that. Well, there's some interesting stuff in there in regards to the Black Templars. And James and I have been talking about it on Facebook, but I haven't mentioned it to you because... Yeah, I didn't mm-hmm. want to spoil anything for you. Yeah. <sighs> but, well, that's cool. Yeah, then, we'll, we'll get okay. back to the we'll get back to the the beast arises after the new year. I might I might try to use the time off as an opportunity to get caught up. Yeah. Yeah, the books we might even good. should we might even should do a couple books per episode at this point. Yeah, I mean we're are we on book six? Yeah, we're starting six. Okay. Maybe we should do six, seven, and eight all in one. That episode. could work. That could work. Uh, right. Let's see. What else? Uh, other than priming and the Venator, um, I've just been reading a lot of the Thousand Sun Rumors. Mm. And yeah. Um, <laughs> boy, you, you talk about making things difficult for a Blood Ravens player. Um yeah. You know, <laughs> each exalted sorcerer is essentially a chapter master, and I would love to have a you know, librarian chapter master, but that doesn't work. So mm-hmm. not unless you're running uh Grey Knights. What do you call it? Ultramarines or Grey Knights, yeah. You know? Oh yeah, 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 because you can run Tiggy with that, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Um I did order the Magnus book, but GW and PayPal decided they didn't want to talk to each other whenever I ordered it, and so it didn't get ordered. So I've got to order it tonight. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Word. But that's uh, that's about it. What about you, man? Nice, well done, dude. Um, uh, I didn't not do anything. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so the past couple weeks, I've you know, well, the past month or so, I've been doing nothing but building. Yeah. Um, I I uh I built Ser- I mean, the entire Seraphon army. I built almost to completion all the Imperial Knights that I have, all seven of those. Yeah. I haven't painted anything though, and uh I actually managed to fail my November commitment to the uh, independent characters hobby progress challenge and the uh one hour a night because I just didn't paint anything i didn't have i actually really didn't have much to paint i guess i could have painted i have two i still have these oops i still have these two weird boys for my Mm -hmm. army which would be weird boy number four and five um (laughs) channeling you apparently jason uh but i'm not sure uh i don't i just didn't feel like it and Sure, I would love to run an ally detachment of, or not an ally detachment, but an, I'd like to ally in a chaos sorcerer's cabal or whatever the hell it is, and that, you know, that would be good. But uh, no, not really feeling it right now, so um, I decided to call it a year on painting uh, for my armies. I'm kind of done for the year, so... Uh, I, I wrote an article, well, I, just like a quick post on my blog, um, detailing all the, like showing some pictures of the stuff I did. I, I, I got everything together on Friday night, took a, like a relaxing couple of hours and pulled out all the models I painted. Yeah. I painted this year 6,200 points. Oh, gosh. Um, that's, of models that's quite a bit man that's that's yeah that's, that's pretty good for a year yeah not as much as some other people i mean i mean also it's not space marines so no offense to anybody who has space marines but there's a big difference between painting 6200 points of orcs and 6200 points of space marines yeah it's something completely different it's it's a lot more models and a lot <laughs> yeah. a lot harder um uh, like next year when I do my Space Marines, 
uh, I will appropriately say how unimpressed I am at how many I'm painting. Um, <laughs> Hipster. <laughs> uh, that's about 260 models, 20 of which are vehicles or fortifications. Yeah. I kind of counted my uh, fortress, some of my uh, fortifications that I repainted in there. Yeah. Because I think those count as, because I put a lot more effort into those uh, those repaints. Well, sometimes um, that does my, take a bit to go through and really think over what you've done yeah. before and what can you add and what would be too much. Mm-hmm. You know, that's 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 something. Yeah, big. a lot of cases it was like a to- almost a total repaint, yeah. leaving very little of what was there behind. So, um, for painted to purchased ratio for kits, I actually managed to eke out a. 52 to 28 ratio of painted to purchased. Nice. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, I mean, I do have the the Pros- Burning of Prospero box, which messed up that average quite a bit, but that's fine. Hey, that's a great box, though. I mean, it's I've I've oh, built yeah. those Marines, and I've had a great time doing them. Mm-hmm. I'm still a little not sure for next year what I'm going to do with those. Um I have a bunch of Space Wolf stuff, a lot, you know, a, bunch, a few Terminators, a few Grey Hunter type models, and then I have the Prospero Space Marines. Mm-hmm. I, I'm still kind of debating whether to do, uh, you know, whether whether to do uh, Salamanders or do a Chaos Force of some kind or what have you. I am not sure, um, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, uh, what else have I been up to? Uh, I okay, yeah. The past week, my project was building my frontline gaming tournament terrain. Yeah. So that stuff is all uh, MDF terrain. Pretty pretty good stuff. It's a lot harder than you would think. The pieces wanted to go in a very specific spot on the models, and I what. I didn't think that would be the case. So what I had done a few months ago was just pull all the pieces out. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, I, I I punched all the pieces out and stacked them up, and uh, come to find out, a lot of the pieces that look similar are not the same. Oh. Uh, they're actually different, little tiny different sizes, so things didn't exactly line up. So um, there's a couple pieces that are a little little off kilter a little skewed yeah uh, but you can't really tell i got those glued together i just use white glue white glue works fine because a lot of it kind of snaps in anyways yeah what's well, MDF? So the white glue is so. fine yeah yeah and so i i gl- and you know when you get it wet it kind of expands anyways so it's wet with the white glue and it's expanding and sticking and it's fine uh, I have seven of those buildings. Cool for my. That's so my. That's like my personal collection, and I'm gonna add some scatter terrain to that. I think just some woods or something to go with them for a couple of. I have to think about what I'm gonna do, whether to make that two or three tables for the for the GT. Right. Um, and I've been cataloging our terrain for the GT. I've got my whole back. My whole back uh, patio table is just covered with terrain. Skip, fortunately, took a lot of the GW kits with him, and he's going to do the two Imperial tables, the Imperial Imperial Battlefield tables that uh, basically GW funded for us, which is really nice. So those those are going to have one big centerpiece, which... um, one has a bastion, or sorry, one has a, a fortress of redemption, and the other one has two uh, uh, firestorm redoubts. Mm-hmm. And the uh, last night, John was over, and I actually like took my saw and sawed the fortress of redemption in half. <laughs> So, <laughs> so that's <clears throat> that's going to be two pieces for the center so that you can put an objective in between them. Yeah. And that's basically what it's it's going to be the same thing with the two Firestorm Redoubts. They're going to be more centrally located, but with with a so you could put an objective in the middle. So um, and then each of the, it's, what is this the Fortress of Redemption that was at the store? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we I took out a buck saw and just buck sawed it in half. Well, it 
what it been there for years before i showed up and it had like an oh inch. yeah no one's gonna complain about that yeah no one used <laughs> it it was uh it was actually gray not with primer but with dust it uh, was great yeah it was it was sprayed black but it was gray because of all the dust <laughs> yeah like i remember mm -hmm. i think i was there about a year and i was painting some stuff and doing some repair work and mike said hey you want to take that home and paint it and i looked at it and i said no thank you very much <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nope, <laughs> nope. So John's gonna paint it, but yeah, we're we broke it in half, and it's gonna be two t terrain features. That's a good idea, and uh, that'll be nice. It'll actually fit in a tote. Um, so each of those imperial tables is gonna have that kind of centerpiece kind of thing. It's also each one is gonna have two bastions. Each one is gonna have uh two sets of um Aegis defense lines, which actually kind of kind of be spread out. Uh, each one will have two of the Imperial Craters mm -hmm. that we fa we finally found that box that has the Imperial Craters. Oh, in it. cool! Okay, and uh, that each one is gonna have the crashed Aquila Lander on it. Nice. So th I think that'll be a those tables will be perfect for for a table. There's some line of sight blocking on there. There's some lighter scatter terrain and and stuff like that. So John's gonna do those and. I'm going to be working on all that other stuff. I have a ton of other stuff. Now, here's the thing. I need people to freaking pre-register for this Golden <laughs> Sprue Cup GT because I have no idea. Last year, we had 20-something people yeah. uh, at the portal this year. They had 30 people. So I'm expecting us to have a good amount of people. I need folks there. I'm, the place can hold 80, yeah, and it's not cheap. Please pre-register. Go to goldensprucupgt.com or do a Google search for the Golden Sprue Cup GT. Golden Sprue, G-O-L-D-E-N-S-P-R-U-E, Golden Sprue Cup. Please log in. Uh, as of this recording, I'm going to leave the $40 uh, fee up until next Sunday. But after that, it'll it goes up to 50 So please, please. Please go register. And it's an ITC event, right? So you can get your it ITC It is. It'll points. be the last ITC GT before the LVO. So come on over. Get your points. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so uh, I played a game with my knights for the first time, and I, I brought it to the store. We had somebody new show up, and I'm like, yeah, this is a list that I just, I just built these models. I wanted to have a game with it. I wouldn't bring a list like this to a pickup game. And they're like, who are you playing today? <laughs> I go, I don't know. They're like, uh... <laughs> I'm like, well, I think I'm playing Phil, and he doesn't count. So... <laughs> Well, so there's that. If I was there, I'd have the Venator and be more than happy to shoot your knights up. Mm -hmm. 190 points. Yeah, let's see what it does. Is super heavy. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> um. Then did I tell that story last time? What? The one about playing Phil? No, you put pl you played Phil and his. I have five thousand templates. Give me a half hour. Yeah. Yeah. No, you didn't tell me about it. What's up? Okay, good. Um, I thought I told somebody, but maybe I'm just crazy. Uh, so then um, I played a game with my orcs against John last Monday, and that was that was good, clean American fun. John is running um, Mechanicus models like the uh, the robots. He's running those as uh, wolf uh, mounted wolf guys. Wolf, wow, wow! I just read an entire book on <laughs> on uh, space wolves, and I don't remember what they're called. Uh, Thunderwolf Thunder Cavalry. Yeah. And I was a little depressed because I brought the worst list, and I'm like, "Wow, this is gonna suck." <laughs> but apparently, John is not running the list, and it's also got three knights in it. I'm like, "Ah, oh, ah!" Oh. <laughs> but apparently, John apparently John is not running it with psychers, so that makes it way easier. So. Yeah. Uh, it was actually it was actually a pretty close game. Uh and then last night we played our first game for the Masters of the Forge Altar of War podcast, which is gonna be on the Free Buddhist Network. <laughs> yeah, that'll be pretty cool. Guess what I forgot to do? I forgot to ask Blake and Ed if we could steal their uh uh podcast format. 
they used to do this format called the Thunderdome, which is basically what we're doing. Okay. Except ours is ours is a little more narrative, but apparently they used to do that, and I was I I knew that, and I'm like, hmm, I should probably talk to them before we do this. So, I I just today I'm like, oh snaps. So I just messaged Blake and Ed to see if they'd be from um the uh life after the cover save podcast if they didn't mind if we did because they haven't done one in forever so i'm sure they'll be cool about it i don't it. think I mean, they y'all didn't yeah, fart anywhere near as much as blake and ed will so <laughs> john went outside to fart a bunch of times but yeah well that's because john's being nice to the microphone yeah he's a he's a gentleman yeah yeah uh so that's it that's all i've got i um i'm tired I'm tired Oh, I I'm ready for a nap. I'm always ready for a nap. Yeah, I I so understand, much man. It's the for me, it's the end of the semester, and if I can just get through Wednesday without strangling one of my students, it's going to be a good semester. Yeah, or the IT department. Oh, that's going to happen. That's there's no. <laughs> that's that's going to happen. There's not going to be any happiness with those guys. That's. <laughs> yeah. I. I'm not going to, I know you don't, you, you don't, you don't like it when I talk smack about, uh, about, uh, a PhD, so I won't, I won't say anything. <laughs> hey, 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 I actually worked in IT for a while. I mean, I, I, I know exactly what they, what their concerns are <laughs> completely. I understand completely. It's just, I actually know what I'm doing and they're like, we don't care. Like I actually work. Our narrative is that you don't know what you're doing. Yeah, and that is the narrative we're going by. <laughs> well, it's okay because I'm going back to my old narrative of, oh, I'll just figure a way around it. Yeah, Yay. yeah, yeah. Yep. And I was, that, I, I, and that's the thing. That's the thing about it. Like, if you don't, if you don't give people what they want when it comes to their computer, they'll come up. They'll come up with a way of getting it, whether yeah. you like it or not. Well, uh, I'm trying sometimes to... those solutions are way worse than what you would have provided for them. <laughs> right. I am trying to be completely legit, above board. You know, I don't want to go through and start fights, but, you know, there's uh-huh. something I got to do to do my job. And if you're not going to let me do it, I'll figure it out. Yay. Yep, exactly. So. Exactly. Yep. So, okay. All well, right. Why don't we take a quick break and then I'm going to get a drink. And then we'll and then we'll talk about Curse of the Wolf and sound good. Sounds awesome. All right, bur- burbs. Greetings, mofos. Are you out of George Dickel number eight, staring at a broken chess machine? Uh, don't want to spend the rest of the year tied to that couch. Well, why don't you head on over to the One Hour a Night Facebook page and see what exciting stuff is going on there? It's a place to post all your daily progress in the hobby grind, as well as receive and give positive feedback. Also, there are usually a few interesting challenges going on. That's right. Uh, All you have to do is search for one hour a night on Facebook. That's numeral one hour a night, all one word. Blood serum tests will be administered prior to approval. Set the helvete och kom dere vekk. Det er ikke bikke. Det er en slags ting. Den imiterer bikke, men det er ikke det. Kom dere vekk, idioter. What he said. Hey, Masters of the Forge listeners, are you looking to expand your Warhammer 40,000 gaming group? Do you want to start a 40k club in your area? Do you want the people you attract to be like-minded mofos? Do you want to advertise your YouTube channel? Or even attract more subscribers to your hobby blog or online community? Then what better way than to advertise on the Masters of the Forge podcast? All we ask of you is that you email us at mastersoftheforge at gmail.com or message us on Facebook with a full text of your advertisement, including the region in which you live and any contact information people can use to get a hold of you. We will have one of our many tech servitors read your advertisement on the air. We promise not to make fun of you. Though we can't always predict the actions of our servitors, you really can't find good help these days. No, you can't. As the news filtered down to the embattled wolf lords, alarm warred with relief in their hearts of each. It was a rare Fenrisian who would acknowledge the need for help, but there could be no denying that reinforcements were sorely needed. However, the space wolves had striven to keep the matter of the wolfen from imperial eyes until it could be understood and resolved. Now, 
with demons infesting their worlds and whole packs of warriors struggling to fight off the wolfen curse even the most obtuse space wolves could see that a wider imperium might judge them harshly as they fought on the space wolves kept one eye on the heavens waiting with trepidation to see whether this crusade fleet came as saviors or executioners they would not have to wait long so this book <laughs> this book is stuff's going down yeah it's it's like legit it's legit stuff is now officially going down for the space wolves i have yet to see a date in here and i think maybe they are doing that on purpose ish i haven't looked through the other book yet yeah but um i don't think it's clear what the uh what the date is i think it, it's definitely definitely towards the end it's t definitely an end uh, time of ending story so this kind of falls in our as we were discussing a, a, la a couple of weeks ago we're kind of trying to focus a little bit on some of this time of ending stuff in in response to the the renewed interest in such things and to help guide people through the process um at least uh, in understanding that this is not a new thing and that it's a ongoing thing and it's it's really a part and parcel of what this world is all about what this game entails <clears throat> yeah i'm finding this interesting um you know we've just been reading the the beast arises and everything in the beast arises series you know, humanity is at that cusp. It's about to go away. And they managed to save it at the end, I'm assuming. Of course they did. We're 8,000 years later. But I'm just wondering, <laughs> you know, this rumored end times, this, you know, moving forward to the story, you know, what's going to happen? What's going to change so they can continue the story, continue, you know, what is next? And I find that kind of fascinating that they're almost showing, you know, here's this old Beast Arises stuff. See, it can be the end of the world, but not really. So how are we going to be saved in the 41st millennium, you know? Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Um, so I thought, I think it's really interesting that um, there's... Throughout the, some of the art in this book, there we have a uh, a three eyed raven, yeah, uh, or a three eyed crow that uh, that's been permeating some of this artwork, which I find interesting. It's it's a part of the Norse lore, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I'm I I've I've been having trouble finding uh, any information on it online because. The damn thing is in A Song of Ice and Fire, Game of Thrones. And it's really, really, it's really hard to find real myths yeah. with all of that crap permeating the first dozen pages of Google results. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, uh, but uh, I think... Uh, I think what they are, they're they're kind of harbingers and messengers of things to come. Uh, they um, kind of this cold uh, truth, you know. This this uh, you better you better be ready for this bad stuff that's about to go down because it's happening, yeah. whether you like it or not. And I thought that I think that's really cool, and I think it makes sense for the for for what we have going forward. Um, and that's really what this is, I think. Uh, we can go. Well, why don't we go through the events of uh, the Curse of the Wolf and okay? Um, and I think I think you'll see why that is the conclusion that we're drawing here, um, uh, because these events really do highlight uh, what's happening now and 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 kind of some of the recent releases that have come out or are about to come out at the end of 2016. Um, so this, this story focuses on the 13th great company um, who were kind of the more feral brothers of 
the Space Wolves back in during the Heresy. And uh, they didn't like the fact that Magnus, during the Great Scouring, I think it was called, uh, Magnus was able to escape into the Eye of Terror and bring his Thousand Sons with him, or something to that effect. I know there was some kind of schism involved in yeah. the Thousand Sons, but uh, regardless, uh, the Thousand Sons, Magnus, and Armon were able to escape, and it didn't sit well with them, and they went into the warp following um, I know that we have in the past seen some stories uh, involving the uh, the Wolfen. Um, in fact, we did a we did a podcast on the uh, um, a war on Fenris around the time of the Beast Arises. I think it was M thirty two or so that that story happened, and and indeed uh, some Wolfen were released onto the. Uh, um, Onto the Thousand Sons in that story. Yeah. And, uh, that was you know, Battle for Wolf the Fang, occur- right? That was Battle for the Fang. Yeah. And, and in Battle for the Fang, they went into a world where some of the members of the 13th Great Company were... Uh, they found them and, and, and uh, had to eliminate them because they had been so badly corrupted by chaos. So, fast forward to today... Um, and uh, the uh, the system of Nerades is engulfed in a warp storm, uh, and and uh, the 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 uh, space wolves are there to or at least nearby uh, to answer the calls for help. Uh, now the space wolves see it as a great uh, a great uh, foretelling of 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 their of their awesomeness that the. Uh, or the, the, the purity of their mission that the stars, the like the warp storm that surrounds the world, parts for their passing. They find it very easy to get into and out of the system. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's probably wrong. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. Magnus will show them the way. <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh. So yeah. Um. Yep. They 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 go on that world and they're basically saved by these wolfen. The wolfen are gonna hold up in this area that the locals have long since uh, decried as a haunted place. Uh, there's a reason for that. Um, <laughs> we'll talk more about that in a little bit. Um, but yeah, they 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 manage to uh, rescue some wolfen that are there and who are uh, basically beset by. Um. Uh, by demons. Uh, very interesting. They they bounce out of there pretty quickly. Um, leave kind of leaving the world to its fate. They basically decide. Well, you know, I'm sure the I'm sure the uh, Inquisition will take care of this. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're always they're so out. nice about everything else that they re- take care of. You know, <laughs> uh, storms start sprouting out. Uh, all, all in every, pretty much in every segmentum of the galaxy. Um, and, uh, Yingvir, the wolfen, one of the, the, like the cap, the chief chieftain of the wolfen that they rescue, he says his brothers would be returning on the wings of a storm. So all of these warp, warp storms, I guess, have a unique fingerprint or signature yeah. and all of these Warp storms seem to have the same signature as the one they found the Wolfen in, uh, and uh, they get in all, like the 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 council, the high you know the council of uh, wolf lords of the great companies get get into an argument get into argument about you know Carl Grimblood he warns that the the storm is a bad omen, um, and uh, he 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 actually isn't kind of he isn't fa- he isn't uh. Uh, he's the kind of the, one of the s- more seers of of all the of all the uh, wolf lords. Yeah. Um, but uh, Bjorn can't be wake and woken up. He's he's asleep. There's a, also a good reason for that, which we'll find out later. Yeah. And uh, Ragnar, Ragnar says, you know, it doesn't matter whether they're good or whether they're that we can trust them or whatever. We have to get to these guys, yeah, and and collect them before chaos or worse, the Inquisition, or the finds the, out about it, or the Dark Angels, because or the Dark Angels. There's so much love yeah. between the wolves and the angels. It's, <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah. It's they just want to give each other hugs with knives. Uh-huh, yeah. Yeah. Knife hugs. Yeah, knife hugs. Yeah, and I think I think I think, you know, there there's a that's very wise cuz it, it really it truly doesn't matter whether the wolfen are are a blessing or a curse. It, the fact of the matter is if anybody finds out about them, that could be a bad bad day yeah. for the for the space wolves. Sorry. Okay. Um so uh one of the cool parts there's a couple pages where uh the book talks about uh equipping the wolfen. Yeah. Uh, which that is really, really, really interesting. Because apparently there are weapons hanging out in Fenris, yeah. on Fenris, that are seem all but designed for Wolfen. So I <laughs> I don't have um, this campaign book, but I have read the mm-hmm. Curse of the Wolfen uh, book as well as the Legacy of Rust uh, series. And mm-hmm. that's kind of a big chapter in the Curse of the Wolfen book is here's oh, yeah. all these weapons that were ceremonial that like hey this is on the wall this is kind mm-hmm. of cool wall art the wolfen show up and start arming themselves they're running through the halls grabbing stuff like oh yeah this is ours and that's <laughs> it's real it's really kind of funny and creepy it's like okay they've gone through and added these plot devices and guess what these toys have always been here for them. Great. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was really cool. And uh, the Iron Priest, his name is Sword Fang, because an Iron <laughs> Priest's name should be is definitely Sword Fang. And he um, manages to, like, the... Um, these weird grenade launchers that the iron or that the uh oh, yeah. wolfen have yeah yeah they're actually like like the machine spirits are attuned to their brain patterns yeah i remember reading that which that was is really interesting so clearly um you know the, what the what he's thinking is you know had they had these warriors existed in the chapters past or had their eventual existence been predicted who knows? Yeah. Big question mark there, but a nugget for a future story, right? Oh, yeah. There's little small things like that can drive entire novels, yep. and series of novels. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so for this reason, the entire chapter spreads out. Except for Harold Deathwolf's great company, everybody fans out, and he he basically stays on on Fenris to defend it uh, as as rear guard. Uh, but uh, the rest of the the rest of the groups, uh, the rest of the group goes out across t- across uh, the galaxy, uh, finding these um, finding these uh, warp storms and trying to gather and collect all the wolfen. Um, uh, some of the Death Wolves uh, manage to uh, go to Svergul. Sver- Svergul? <laughs> we'll run with this. It's a yeah. <laughs> let's go with that. Uh, it their big city walks around on legs, kind of like uh, that city from uh, uh, from one of the Star Wars books. Oh yeah. Yeah, it was like uh, Lando's mining operation after the fall of the Empire. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, he got this. It was it was basically like a hundred AT-ATs with a city on their backs. Yeah, I remember reading. Well, about this that. is kind of yeah. like that. It had a it had like eight, six or eight legs, and it's just a whole big giant hive city walking around. Well, someone fell asleep at the wheel and drove it over a cliff. <laughs> so if you can imagine an entire hive city toppling off of a cliff, and. Uh, yeah, bodies and demons everywhere. Uh, Zinch is there, rocking it out. Of course. Um, yeah, clearly. Yeah. Harold has his misgivings um, at saving the uh, uh, the wolfen. He hears the howls, and he kind of sits there on the top of the ravine and watches them getting... 
attacked by the demons. But he's kind of like, I don't know. These guys are bad. Maybe I should just let them die. But he decided to screw it. Let's, you know, my, the, you know, the, this is the decision we've made. And, you know, I'm a good, I'm a good dog. So here we go. And they run in there and they, they're fighting. And I think the best part of this is he, they're fighting a soul grinder and Harold gets caught in the soul grinders claw and a wolfen pries the claw open, rips its arm off, and beats it to death with its own <laughs> arm. <laughs> I mean, what more do you want, right? Like, it doesn't get much more grim than that. Um. <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty. That's pretty great. <laughs> Yeah, that's perfect. Oh, it was Crom. It was Crom Dragon Gaze who was on Fenris, not Harold Deathwolf. My bad, everybody. Sorry. Yeah, Harold was out on the, out on the prowl. Yeah. So where else? Oh, one thing I noticed was uh, the Uthwe Eldar were hunting the Wolfen. Now that's interesting. That's that's right. Interesting because the Uthwe are the seers, right? Yeah. They're the. They are. Uh, What's his name? Eldrad's group. And so I wonder if they were thinking, you know, these guys are, you guys are better off if we kill these guys for you or something like that. Eldrad's alive, sure. right? Uh, I guess. I don't know. His, yeah. his lore has been, he's dead. He's alive. He's dead. It's like Schrodinger's Eldar, you know? Um, <laughs> yeah. I think he's still alive at this point. Okay. And, in this story, but yeah, it's weird. I, you know, they're they're hunting the wolf and probably for a good reason. Yeah, um, I just thought that was really interesting. Um, the iron wo- iron wolves are really cool. They they're on Midrigal Alpha. Um, uh, they have augmetics. They're kind of they're very much like the Iron Hands in a way, but yeah. space wolfy Iron Hands, I guess. This book is. Really show it, trying very hard to show the diversity of space wolves. Yeah, like when they show the armies and stuff, they show the death wolves, and they're very generic space wolves, but very wolfy. They have um, a lot of the uh, uh, thunder wolf calf, and they have a bunch of the Fenrisian wolves, and they have the wolfen when they show this army. Then the iron wolves, they show all the tanks. And and stuff that they have. Yeah. I thought that was really cool. And then later on, there's another one we'll talk about that they show um, the Firewolves, I think, or something like that. See, Iron Fire Wolves Rains, sounds really interesting to me. The, you know, generic Space Wolves don't, they don't mm-hmm. sound all that interesting, but Iron Wolves sound yeah. interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, it does sound cool. Yeah. And in the next week, we'll talk about uh, on your tabletop. We'll talk about one of the formations for the Iron Wolves yeah. that are in that book. So that sh- that would be a pretty interesting formation to run if you're if you're looking at Space Wolves but want to try something different. So they are. Um, Uh, they have this auger array that the Iron Priest, uh, the Iron Priest name, by the way, is Hell Hammer. So that's pretty <laughs> cool. Um, they have an auger array which they've attuned to detect the old Thirteenth Company armor, that is which cool. has a special signature, which is really, yeah, it's really interesting. Yeah. Um, very, 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 I didn't realize that that kind of thing was possible yeah. with the, their technology so i thought that was really cool um uh, they find uh Midrigal alpha decimated by nurgle like there's gas vents belching out grossness people are crying for help but they're like eh can't help you <laughs> <laughs> they're just look we're oh uh, don't mind us we're just looking for wolf and just die quietly in your cities um <laughs> They have to like mow through a whole bunch of plague bearers and blood letters, and I thought that was interesting too. Throughout this, you're noticing that they are. This is not a concerted effort by a single demon prince or a single god of of chaos. This is definitely a uh, combined effort here. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, and the space the space wolves fight Mordok the rotted, who is vomiting flies, and it is awful. Uh, yeah. But they are able to extract the wolfen with great losses. Um, there, that seems to be a that seems to be a uh, theme here. Is the wolves are getting pretty beaten up by this yeah. entire thing? Yeah. Um, uh, every time they save some of the wolfen, they're losing their own non-wolfen troops, you know? Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. great cost to the chapter. But, what... And again, you know, you, you don't... You, you gotta think about it on the bigger picture, too. Um, anybody who's reading this, read this with us, or read, read before, um, the alternative could be censure by the Imperium and the Inquisition. Oh yeah, and they've seen that happen before. They've helped, <laughs> so they know what they know what that entails. So they they have to uh, they have to be careful. Um, now, snapback, uh, we kind of have a a bit of a location change um, on Titan. Uh, there's so this is really cool. I didn't know this. Uh, we we really should do a show about the Grey Knights because it's very interesting. They have yeah. this thing on top the, the this giant room on top of the silver pinnacle called the Orgurium, mm-hmm. where the prognosticators prognosticate. Yep. And there, this machine called the Speculum Infernus springs to life <laughs> as the Wolfen warp storms appear. So th- that's really cool. It kind of locates ongoing warp storms and predicts future ones. Uh, I thought that was really cool. I wonder if it's just this machine that does this all by itself. Yeah. Or if there are sensors throughout the galaxy that detect and report back to the Speculum Infernus. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm not sure. That would be really that'd be a really cool little tidbit to explore in a story if someone's writing one. Yeah, that um, would be uh, yeah. But it definitely uh, it definitely locates these ongoing storms, uh, and the mobile the Grey Knights mobilize on mass, um, and uh, unlike the Space Wolves. The warp is unhappy about them <laughs> investigating this problem <laughs> because ships are lost, uh, ships are waylaid, damaged. Only a few, only a few ships make it to these worlds. Um, but uh, brother Captain Stern uh, arrives at Midgal Alpha and finds the desiccated corpse of a wolfen and orders his astropaths to find Logan Grimnar. Yep. Uh, yeah, he, he's like, okay, here we are to kill the demons. This is what we do. Where's the demon prince? Where is he? What happened to him? Aw, freaking kill steal in space wolves. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Kill stealing bastards. <laughs> um, so that brings us to the world of Tranquilitus which is enveloped by a similar warp storm. Uh, wolves are on route, but unfortunately, we have the Ravenwing investigating the situation. Uh, the Ravenwing, uh, the Raven Guard, or, yeah, not the Raven Guard, the Ravenwing actually had been on um, Nerades. There was a group of scouts that have always been on Nerades, um, kind of protecting this uh, uh, dark angel relic. This they're like seven cursed swords that that uh, dark angels had wielded in the past. Uh, I don't know why they don't destroy them. Uh, the, the excuse they give is that they are ancient relics of the chapter and don't and therefore must be protected. Yeah, if they leave well, them there great. long enough. The blood ravens will show up for them. It's fine. <laughs> come on seven yeah, swords yeah so we've 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 looted <laughs> bigger than that <laughs> yeah so um they but they find one of the scouts and they're able to um kind of they, they they all the scout also has a a servo skull that recorded the the interact the inter the altercation and it's unclear whether the scouts were killed by the wolfen or killed by the demons or what? Yeah. Uh, 
but the Dark Angels, Azrael's not going to uh, spark another civil war <laughs> <laughs> based on grainy servo skull footage. Uh, I think one of the, or he says something to the effect of we, the least of all can ill afford another schism with yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, that's right, dude. <laughs> you least of all can afford another to start another civil war. Um, yeah. And considering so, some of the, the things that happen at the end of the curse of Wolfen book and the entire legacy of Russ series. Um, we're going to see where this heads. <laughs> uh, one of the scouts disappears. That scout also disappears. Nobody knows where he, he goes. So that, that is also very interesting. Uh, but as we find out, as time, as time goes on, there have been, th- these plans have been in place for quite some time. And it is possible there was someone who made him disappear. Uh, so the world of Tranquilitus is enveloped by a warp storm, and uh, when the Fire Howlers respond, uh, Sven Bloodhowl, this is a wolf lord with a jump pack, chainsword, and frost axe. Yep. Like a boss. This guy rules. Yep. Um, when when he shows up, uh, the Ravenwing are l- warn them not to land. Uh, he's like, listen, uh we're we're investigating something down here. Your help is neither welcome nor appreciated. And uh Sven Bloodhowl basically tells them to tells them where they can stick it. <laughs> Here's a frost axe. Cr- you know where it goes. <laughs> yeah. He says, I'll be damned if I let L. Johnson's sour faced chant mumblers beat me to the prize. <laughs> See, that alone, that is just like a love sonnet, you know? Yeah. It's trying to tell the Dark Angels about his forbidden love. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the um, the Fire Howlers are... These guys are cool. Another kind of different way to play the Space Wolves. Sky Claws, Swift Claws, Land Speeders, and Wolf Guard with Jump Packs. Yeah. Um, which is great. Yeah, it's definitely a way that you can go with uh, with the Space Wolves. Um, and these guys are fighting against Nurgle and Zinch in this situation, including uh, a quote-unquote Grand Cavalcade of Slanesh, which I assume is one of the formations yeah. uh, that they name-dropped in here. Um, they they find the wolf in fighting uh, against the demons, and they, they're kind of going through these woods, uh, the, this like haunted forest, basically. Tranquilitus is like, no one lives there. Anybody who tries to live there die or like disappears. Um, and they, they're they wandering through the forest and they're, they kind of see fleeting glimpses of the Raven Guard. Uh, or sorry, not the Raven. I keep on saying Raven Guard. The Raven Wing. And uh, it's hard to tell who's attacking who uh, or who's a Raven Guard. Raven. Raven. Raven oh, Wing. For Christ's sake. It's just it's just never going to work. It's just <laughs> never going to work. Can't tell who's a dark angel and who is a space wolf, so they just kill demons and they're not going to really kill each other anyways. Yeah. Um and uh I thought it was really cool to have the dark shroud bomber come in and immobilize the wolf in with one of their bombs. Yeah. It it shows that stasis bomb in effect. I think in the story it actually like or in the rules it's like instant death, but it's not actually killing someone. They're just out of the game yeah. for all intents and purposes well, it's a, because it's a stasis bomb. I'm trying to remember what the exact rule is. I think you remove models, but in the lore it's always mm-hmm. been uh they capture the character and the fallen yeah, with the fallen. that. They don't want them to die. Yeah. Yeah. And then transport. So that them was back. really cool. Yeah. That was really cool to see that. Um, and uh, th- of course, this is the worst. It's better if these people die because at this point, that means there has to be an altercation between uh, Sven Bloodhowl and Samael. And Samael shows up. He's like, "Yeah, you can go. We're taking these guys with us." And and uh, Bloodhowl's like, "Yeah, over my dead body." 
and uh, they almost. That I love the be fact arranged. that that yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, uh, <laughs> don't mess with the dark angels. They don't they, they don't play well with others. Yeah, yeah. They nearly come to blows, but then the demons attack. So they fight, and you have the trope of. The very fast fighter, the very, very fast, like, guys on bikes and jetpacks jumping off a cliff into the transports waiting for them. That is so cool. Yeah. At least I think so. Maybe I'm just a nerd. (laughs) It's okay. You can be a nerd. But yeah, they jump (laughs) off and... And just as just as the the uh, space wolf transports are rising up from the side of the cliff to to uh, uh, save them and bear them away, and the Raven guard our pit. God, <laughs> and the dark <laughs> the Raven wing. and the dark angels, the dark angels are pissed. So they leave as well. Samuel is pissed. He is not happy, um, but he's still not gonna. He's still not going to attack space wolves. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's, that's a, a, a a bridge too far. Whatever the, whatever the, uh, metaphor is. Um, meaning that there's someone that the dark angels won't fight, (laughs) which is pretty impressive. Uh, so we have the, um, the world of Vicarus. Uh, the shrine city of Absalom on Vicarus. Uh, the place has obviously seen some demonic incursion. There are heaped bodies, uh, beleaguered defenders. Pick screens are distorted and full of crazy, insane transmissions. And this is where Neal Stormcaller and Logan Grimnar have shown up. And Murder Fang. Yeah, because why and not? And Brother Captain Stern. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. Yeah, Murder Fang's here. Um, he's not new. Uh, Logan figures that Murder Fang can help them find the Wolfen. Because they say it straight up that Murder Fang is a Wolfen. Not 13th Company. Yeah. At least I don't think so. But a wolfen and uh, someone who has kind of kind of hearkened the call of the wolf, so they hope that he can help them. Yeah, and he does. He can. He he flies straight as narrow like a bloodhound towards uh, this dome and near the center of the city. Um, unfortunately, so does Brother Captain Stern in his uh, Storm Ravens. One Storm Raven gets transmuted to lead. Which is unfortunate because it falls right out of the sky. Yeah. Um, but two, the two remaining storm ravens just fly towards the dome and don't stop. Um, meanwhile, in they they're able to the space wolves are able to to penetrate the dome and they're fighting inside when the two storm ravens just go blasting through through the dome. Just just you never know. Yeah. Like you know they're they're made of sterner stuff. I guess. Pew pew. Pew 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 yeah. pew 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 pew. Um, and it's cool. The Grey Knights have built-in augers to, to be able to detect like uh, warp weirdness. Um, so Logan Grimnar is decided to fight the Bloodthirster, which is fine. He's like, well, to fight such an abomination could well be the death of the Great Wolf, but. He would not shy from so great a challenge, nor leave his packmates to fight in his stead, which is definitely a space wolfy thing. Yeah. Or at least a space marine thing in general. Yeah. Um, uh, he's about to get murdered, though, when a group of paladins jumps out of a storm raven and saves him. Da-da-da. Hashtag glorious intervention. Yeah, he's kind of pissed off about it, <laughs> but he's glad he's not dead. So yeah. six of one, you know, or, or, you know, you take the good with the bad. Um, but as Captain Stern is fighting the Bloodthirster, he's like, he's, 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 he orders Logan to surrender. (laughs) Surrender! As he fights, he's, he's not talking to the demon. The demon's going to die. He's telling Logan to surrender while he's fighting the demon, which I thought was really funny. And Logan replies, you pious butchers aren't welcome here, which that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, and he's at every word he like stabs, he stabs the, 
the demon prince. He's like, you stab, pious stab, butcher's stab, aren't welcome here. Stab, 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 stab. And then he gets up in Stern's face, like, chest plate to chest plate. He chest bumps this guy. He's like, get the f- Yeah. Break off. Break yourself, foo. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was really cool. <clears throat> I am impressed with how much knowledge the um, Logan has about the Grey Knights and Captain Stern specifically. Well, there's a couple of short stories that kind of um, detail the how do i put this the oh, dislike is that between the, mm, like i don't think stern was involved but the dislike between the space wolves and the gray knights and i'm trying to remember right it's it's been a while since i've read that i was still god that had been three years ago when i read that so yeah. oh yeah isn't there a story where the space wolves and the inquisition pretty much almost come to blows or actually do come to blows yeah. Over over the purging of a planet. Yeah. Yeah, I'll have to read that at some point, because that seems interesting. I, yeah, so nobody's mind-wiping the Space Wolves. Right. So they know all about the the uh, the, in- the Inquisition and the uh, Grey Knights at this point. And if I remember right, I think they woke up Bjorn, the Feldhanded, to actually negotiate to make sure that there wasn't other problems, like the entire galaxy mm. didn't fall into... Some space wolf versus Inquisition Grey Knights civil war. <laughs> so fantastic. Yeah. Um so Stern insists that the, the wolfen are mutants. And in <laughs> Grimnar's response is they are kin. There is no taint in them. It's complicated. <laughs> yeah. That's like a relationship <laughs> status on Facebook. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this might be a little more than quote unquote complicated. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's definitely things wrong with their gene seed and they yeah. talk about it throughout the book is, you know, the, the iron, the iron priests are, and, and also the, um, uh, the, uh, storm priests, is that what they're called? Storm priests, whatever yeah. the psychers are, very much sure that there is no chaos taint in the wolfen, but there definitely is something wrong with their gene seed. Yeah. You know, uh, and, and there, maybe they can fix it. Maybe they can't, but still, there's still a problem. Um, and I think it's interesting. I think it lends itself to, is this is part of the greater conversation of how long did the emperor, plan on the Astartes existing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm not entirely convinced that the, the emperor ever planned on the space Marines actually being a thing for an extended period of time. Yeah. Uh, I think they were meant to conquer the galaxy and then disappear. Yeah. I don't think they were meant to be permanent. It's like the uh uh the Thunder Warriors, they were not around forever. Right. Uh, there was no there was no, you know, some say that the Space Marines are refined Thunder Warriors. Whatever the case, I I honestly don't believe that the imp- the Emperor ever planned on having Space Marines forever. Yeah. So it's very interesting. Um we can or we can debate that at another time. Yeah. Well, with some of the rumors coming out about the next, you know, six months of campaign books and whatnot, you mm-hmm. know, it, that kind of. Well, we'll talk about that later. Yeah. <laughs> Those are rumors, and we don't um, deal with rumors or something. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, or whatever. <laughs> uh, so as they're in transit, we find that the Wolfen have been very restless. They're attacking servitors and crew. And unfortunately, other space wolves are also starting to lose their temper more readily. Um, blood is being shed between yeah. brothers, uh, all because that they are exposed to the wolf and almost an entire ship is kind of devolving into wolfen traits only kind of the um the human uh what are they called huskarls or whatever yeah only the the human the humans are able to keep the space wolves from killing each other but (laughs) that's probably very difficult (laughs) 
<laughs> a difficult task uh, for them. Uh, but Logan ha- decides, well, listen, we can't, we have to keep going forward. There's nothing we can do because uh, this, the, um, uh, the gray Knights actually tell them that they have received communications from uh, Fenris mm-hmm. and that Fenris is under attack by demonic forces. Yay. Yay. Yeah. Uh, that's also a very interesting situation. Um, you know, that, that the, the attack on Fenris, that information can only be brought to them by the Grey Knights for some reason. Yeah. That is kind of weird. A little odd. Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, so the return isn't as easy as, uh, the attacks on the worlds. Um, the region is beset by this warp storm and travel is not as easy as they were hoping it would be. Um, clearly some other forces are at work here. Um, the alpha Legion, uh, led, led by Lord Vitus scale, which is just a great name also. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's really cool how they show the alpha Legion, um, having or overtaken Morkai's keep on the world of Frostheim, it's one of the other worlds of that system. Uh, they've just left the bodies of the space wolves to rot. Um, they have cultists manning a bunch of positions or demons arriving via warp rift, uh, mainly, uh, Zinch and, uh, Korn. Um, he, he doesn't really trust the, this scale character doesn't really trust the demonic powers that have provided the demons, uh, but he'll use them. He'll let them fight for him. Yeah. Why not? Right. Yeah. I mean, at the very least you can use the demons as canned fodder until, you know, something happens. Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, he's performing this ritual. That is the plan is to de- devolve the entire Fenris system into warp storm. Uh, and this has been, this is where we realize that Abaddon the Despoiler has been at the has been the machinator behind the scenes of this entire operation, which means that it is possible that the this is uh, this these actions are pre- a pre- this is a predecessor of the Thirteenth Black Crusade. They want to hamstring the Space Wolves. Um, kind of get rid of one of the Imperium's most important fighting groups, a a group that is still almost well, more so than the rest of the chapters at Legion strength. Yeah. Uh, And and an effective, an effective group. Um, How far his machinations have gone is, is unclear, but that's, to be expected from a story like this. Um, what do you think about this? I think, I think it's really interesting. Yeah. It's, I mean, this whole beginning of the 13th black crusade, you know, they're, they're coming back to this. And, mm-hmm. you know, one of the things that we had looked at, and I think a couple of other podcasts have looked at is how often do these crusades happen? And, you know, they're just starting to get, the distance between them is starting to get shorter and shorter. And it's almost like, well, it's not only a 13th Black Crusade. It's like this one Black Crusade that's been happening for a while. They just have been kind of, you know, taking a short break in between each. I don't know. It's just, mm-hmm. it's interesting. I'm I'm looking forward to picking up the Wrath of Magnus book and picking up. Mm. I'm actually going to go ahead and pick up this book. I wasn't going to because it was. Wolves and demons, but yeah, this sounds a lot more interesting. <laughs> and as someone who mm. really likes a thousand suns, well, you know, I probably should yeah. look at this. Yeah, yeah, it's a happy, happy story, that... you know. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's cool. I, it's cool to see the Alpha Legion. Yeah, um, a lot of the time, Alpha Legion are written ambiguously yeah but there's really no ambiguity in this story this alpha legion is actively causing uh chaos uh warp storms and chaos incursions in this on the space wolf's home world yeah. i mean 
that's not really ambiguous. You're legit acting in a way that would <laughs> throw every throw the Imperium into into at least a t- turmoil in at least a, one part of their of of the Imperium. So I don't know. This guy's a bad dude. Yeah, and he's definitely you know got it out for the space wolves. Or if he oh, doesn't, sure. you know, at the very least, it's causing chaos. It's causing uncertainty. Mm-hmm. You know, a chance for them to march to Terra. Maybe I don't know. Mm-hmm. There's more to it too as we go on. Uh, there's a lot of you know the space wolves attack. Um, there's a great map of the Fenris system in here too that kind of shows you all the worlds and who's attacking them. Uh, the volcanic ocean world of Svelgard. Um, which orbits, um, what is it? Uh, frost time. I think it just orbits really close to frost time. Yeah. So it's got lots of volcanic activity and its oceans are liquid. Um, and, uh, the fire, how there's a whole big thing about the fire howlers fighting there and they take more huge losses though. They are able to push out the demonic, uh, threat there. Yeah. Um, Harold Her- death wolf makes for frost time. Uh, and confronts the Alpha Legion. More huge losses at the hands of those Alpha Legion war machines and weapon emplacements. Like they have Hell Drakes, and they've taken over all the Space Wolf defenses, like the the Vengeance batteries and stuff. Yeah. Um, there's a little sidebar where which uh, details the a um, Space Wolf named Kiarl who becomes a wolfen in the middle of the battle. And he murders a bunch of dudes. Yeah. I that was really cool. That's actually in the Curse of the Wolf and, um, novelization, too. Oh, really? He's a character in that one? Yeah. Or that's something that they show? That happens. I don't remember if his name was in there, but that did happen in the book. I'm the, It's mm-hmm. kind of fun because I'm you know, reading our show notes, and I'm remembering back to reading that book and going, oh, yeah, they talked about that in there. And there are some mm-hmm. things that we're talking about that I don't remember. <laughs> at mm-hmm. all but you know there's some stuff like the alpha legion guy i do remember him being in mm-hmm. there is there any more like detailed information about him is is there more ambiguity in the story than there is in in uh the campaign book or is he pretty much just with uh, a uh, mustache twirler uh i'm trying to remember exactly the curse of the wolfen book is not a novel to be perfectly honest it's a novella it's mm-hmm. probably about half mm-hmm. size and so there's a lot of stuff that it doesn't go really into character detail there's a lot of movement forward of the story but not mm-hmm. a lot of character depth oh. whereas the legacy of russ is the story doesn't move i think it's actually just kind of catching up with everything else that's happening mm-hmm. in the fenris system um and I guess more there's more character depth there, but there's also a lot more quote unquote action. Um and mm-hmm. so the story doesn't move ahead terribly far in the legacy of Russ. Um Okay. And people might disagree with me on that, but I just as I was reading it, I was like, Okay, yeah, the story's moving, but they were bouncing between every planet in the Fenris system. And when you mm-hmm. start chopping your books into here's six seven locations then you really can't go into depth on any one location yeah because you have to describe what's going on and get people in that mindset yeah understood well here on here on uh, frost time scale is killed uh he doesn't get whatever reward he was hoping for from uh performing this action but the uh yeah but the uh uh Ritual is complete, unfortunately. Um, then we have Midgardia, uh, which is cool. This is actually the uh, this is the battle that we uh, played in yesterday with. Uh, I played with John um, from the uh, on your tabletop section uh, from the missions. Uh, it is an above ground above ground Midgardia has a dense forest. Below ground uh, are the cities. So, um, uh, above ground, the, the Iron Wolves with their vehicles are fighting above ground, while Logan Grimnar and his great company uh, fights in, in beneath the beneath the surface. 
where they where they go up against an infernal tetrad of four demon princes, one of each god, Ugh. which is really interesting. Four demon princes, one of each god. So, huh? Yeah. Huh. Definitely, the, it seems like chaos is starting to look past some of their traditional differences, don't you think? Yeah, that kind of um, that kind of harkens to like the Black Legion type stuff. It's like, hey, we're all just gonna, yep. we're all gonna get along, we're all gonna sing kumbaya, and then we're going to smack somewhere over the head with an acoustic guitar or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. And it seems like all of a sudden all of the demons disappear and uh, the city collapses. Yeah. So that's the last we hear from Logan, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> that will do it. At least until at least until the next book, I guess. Logan's Logan disappears along with his entire great company. Yeah. Um it's interesting he like throws himself on top of a wolfen uh to protect him. Uh, as the as the city crumbles, which I thought that was really interesting. Yeah, I mean they aren't wearing full plate armor, so it's understandable. Um, then we have Crom Dragon Gaze on Fenris. Uh, he fi- Bjorn finally wakes up. Apparently, Bjorn's spirit has been fighting demons in the Empyrean. Whoa! Okay. <laughs> How cool is that? <laughs> That was not in the book. I did not read that. <laughs> How cool is yeah. that? Bjorn, my Bjorn, and he's probably not a robot in the Imperium. He's probably himself. Yeah. So he, well, and who is anybody really? Like, you don't really have much of a form. Yeah. But yeah, he's been in the Imperium fighting off demons in the Imperium, tr- making sure they don't, uh, making sure they don't breach the walls of, of uh, the Fenris. So that was pretty sweet. <laughs> um, uh, and he, he, when he wakes up, he's like, yeah, I'm still fighting there, actually. I just woke up a little bit to tell you. Uh, yeah, some bad Joju is going on on the moon. So you should go there. Yeah. Valdermani is the moon of Fenris, and they have a giant comms relay there. A giant communications array with uh, lots of... Um, astropaths who send messages uh and he's like you know i know you're here at he says to Krom, he's like listen i know you're you've sworn to defend fenris itself you're the rear guard but you need to go now you need to leave and go take care of this business because business is bad on on uh on valderman so uh he's like all right bjorn you you know, you're arm wrestling demons in the Empyrean, you know, I guess you're the kind of person I don't say no to. So yeah, <laughs> there's a cool picture in, in the book too, of Bjorn's chamber where they keep him. It's way more impressive than you would think it is. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Or at least way more impressive than I thought it would be. I thought they would just put these guys in a hole in the ground, but nope. Nerp, it's it's properly forty k ish. Okay, cool. <laughs> that sounds like it could be fun, you know. Mm-hmm. That would be a nice, uh, like, um, diorama. I think. Oh yeah, yeah. That probably would. That would be yeah. So, um, the Grey Knights assault uh, Valdermani, uh, and uh, they. Um, they find out that a distress call has been intentionally sent to draw the Grey Knights there. Great. Uh, Just as they make Planet Fall, a Nova cannon comes to life and bisects the Grey Knight Battle Barge. Great. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Not good. Not good. Yeah, it's, uh, you know... There's a lot, a lot that goes on here. It basically, it turns out that um, th- there's this dark apostle who's uh, warped the brains of these astropaths and is feeding into this psychic disturbance 
that will cause the a humongous explosion. Um, not so much. I, they didn't really go into whether it will actually like plunge the area into a warp storm or not. But at the very least, it will cast doubt on the space wolves. Yeah. Right. Um, killing Stern, killing the Grey Knights, um, destroying their uh, battle barge, the whole nine yards. This whole thing, this entire campaign has been about sowing dissent in the Imperium and creating distrust of the space wolves. Yeah. Right. Um, and uh, Stern is able to kill the Dark Apostle with kind of with some help from Krom, uh, who they kind of fight side by side to destroy the uh, to destroy the demons and send them back from where they came from. Uh, then the rock appears in the sky. Here we go. Which is unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so when the rock appears in um, The Curse of the Wolf and we're talking about the Dark Angels, not Dwayne Johnson. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Good point. Yeah. Thank you for pointing that out. Well, you know. He's in everything now that he, he saves all the franchises, um, <laughs> just fine by me, but whatever. Uh, the end of uh, the Curse of the Wolfen book is when the rock shows up. Yeah, that's when the Dark Angels and the Ultramarines and the Iron Hands and a bunch of other chapters, this quote unquote crusade fleet, that's when they show up. And that's essentially the end of, the, of that book. Uh huh. Yeah, that's the end of this as well. We okay. have. We have uh, Ultramarines, Iron Hands, Dark Angels, and a dozen other yeah. chapters showing up to whoop ass. Yeah. All of the evidence, you know, points to the Space Wolves being not on the up and up. Yeah. Um, the the Wolfen, um, the fact that the Space Wolves have been going to these Imperial Worlds extracting the wolf and, and then leaving the world to fester in demonic activity. Yeah. Um, warp storms appearing wherever they show up. Uh, the gray Knight situation here, like that ship being destroyed. Yeah. It, they're not really in communication with the gray Knights because all of the astropaths on that planet are dead and the spaceship is destroyed. So Stern can't talk to the, the fleet right now. Yeah. Um, and there's rumors that Stern actually had to just kill Logan. That's one of the rumors that are going around. And the great thing, <sighs> this, this book ends with the best name yet. There is a communications officer named Voxman Mendaxis. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. He's working in the he's working in the pit, one of the pits of the bridge. Like it seems like all the 40k spaceships, their bridges are very much like the bridges of the, of Star Destroyers where there there are these like work pits where the uh workers are going about their business. And this Voxman Mendaxis, he's like giggling to himself. Yeah. Or he's trying not to giggle as he's listening to Azrael talk about how he's about to orbitally bombard all the worlds of Fenris and apparently he's a changeling yeah and he's been feeding them all kinds of incorrect information do you want me to tell you more about him from the legacy of Russ oh please tell me more about Voxman uh um, Voxman Mendaxis yeah he, Voxman <laughs> is the um it's a title <laughs> But it's not... Oh, it is! Okay! I thought it was his name! No, no, and it gets worse. You think, oh, he's just one of the guys in the crew. No, he's running the crew. Mm -hmm. He's the dude. Oh, great. If He's the guy. So if Azrael wants to communicate with Stern, or if he wants to communicate with anyone, it goes through Mendaxis. Oh, no. And so... And he's a changeling. He's, like, wearing skin. Yeah. He's, wear he's wearing a man suit. Yeah. He's talking about how uncomfortable it is, but, you know, it's 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 the cross you have to bear if you want to giggle, 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 have some fun. Oh, he runs around um, as Azrael in a couple of scenes. Are you kidding me? Uh -uh. No, I'm, I'm very serious. This character becomes a big 
uh, antagonist in the antagonist in the legacy of Russ, like those eight short stories. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's he's in every one, and every one of them, he's giggling because <laughs> he is causing distrust and discord. Um, he basically just turns off all of the incoming communications into the space uh, into the Dark Angels fleets. So they're bombarding things. The space wolves are saying, "Hey, stop it!" But he's turned off the receivers essentially, and said, <laughs> "Nope, nope, you're. We don't hear you." And mm-hmm. Azrael's trying to figure out, well, why are the space wolves attacking us? And there's all sorts of stuff. I mean, it's just it's it's an interesting character. There's a lot of chaos that this this guy creates. That's hilarious. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I don't know if it's hilarious, yes. but I mean, as you're as I'm reading, it's like. Wow, this is really an interesting character who is a complete mm-hmm. and total jerk and yeah, you as you read through the the short stories you realize you know what a horrible thing that he is. Um yeah. I guess this is spoilers are okay, yeah. Yeah, I mean we're going to tell people. Okay, yeah, he he manages to escape um at the end uh, of the last book, but not after like he ran to continue through, Stern survives um, to the end of that book, and Stern and Azrael and one of the big Space Wolf guys and an Inquisitor, uh, De Mornay, who's been coming after the Dark Angels forever, they're all running around the bowels of the rock running after the Changeling because the Changeling has disabled all the interior communications. I mean, it's just complete and total chaos the last... It's all in the last book is where this all happens. Mm-hmm. So it's it's a great little great little series of, of short stories. I mean there's a lot of we'll call it bolter porn. You know, a lot of <laughs> fighting and that's I I'm not always that interested in that. But that sort of scene where they're running through the rock and seeing, hey, there's stuff going on down here, that's pretty cool. Uh the reason that he gets like repulsed from the rock though are the watchers in the dark the dark angels oh, nice. little dudes like he's going for i think he's going for luther's cell this the space hobbits yeah he's going for the Luth- for luther's cell and runs into a watchers in the dark and the watcher in the dark just looks at him and the changeling turns around and runs away <laughs> and then you know man just to get off the 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 off the rock it's just really funny you know that Finally, Uh-oh. yeah, <laughs> yeah. What was the um, that character in the He Man cartoons that was in the like Orko? Yeah, he's in the purple with the hat. That's what I always. Orko. Yeah, that's what I think of when I think of the Watchers in the Dark. That's who I see. <laughs> so that's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, the Rock is cool. Uh, they got a they have a picture of the Rock. I always assumed the Rock was more vertical than horizontal. Yeah. I never saw it as a traditionally designed, well, not that you get designed, but like a space Hulk. Yeah. I thought of it more of as a kind of like a a taller than it is long. Right. But I guess what is long, right? Yeah. Like what's in space, but it do- definitely looks like it's more of a traditional space Hulk looking thing. Oh, interesting. But that's cool. Okay. Yeah, it's neat. It's a cool picture anyways. And... Someone has definitely um, taken the time to... Uh, give it a lot of detail it's a nice picture not all the pictures in here are all that great but that's a cool one okay well fortunately the space wolves still have void shields so hopefully they do not get decimated at the start of the next book but we shall see yeah we shall see uh well this was a fun topic i'm glad we did it because i think it's important to stay current. Yeah. I think we should try to stay current going forward when it comes to the lore and the developing lore. And we can always go back in between these new releases and, uh, and talk about other stuff. Um, indeed next, next month in January, I hope we can just go right ahead and forge forward and talk about, um, Magnus, the, uh, Magnus and, and all that that's, that's happening. Um, Interested in the offbeat world of 40K? Is your bits box full of 20-year-old space elves? Have you ever searched for something out of production 40K on eBay? 
Well, hold on to your zotes and head over to Corsair Radio. It covers the full scope of the hobby, homebrew rules, fluff, campaigns, oddball models, and more. From Terra to the Eye of Terror, visit us at CorsairRadio.blogspot.com. That's CorsairRadio.blogspot.com. This is Rob Sanders, and you're listening to the Masters of the Forge, where the world of 40K comes to life on your tabletop. Welcome back. Ah, uh, now we have still Jason, but hey, we everyone. we got someone slinked in the back door. Doug, what's up, Doug? What's up, guys? Doug Johnson of Table War fame on the show again. Thanks for coming. Oh, I'm, it's a pleasure, man. I love coming on the show. Awesome. You know, uh, we're having you on today because you have all kinds of exciting, life changing things happening over at Table War. And I wanted to touch base with you because friend of the show, um, hooking us up in the past, good friend of the show, good friend in general. Um, yep. We had such a fun time in freaking Nottingham. Uh, that was amazing. Yeah, so yeah, I, I didn't make that. So, you know, just keep rubbing it in. Guys. <laughs> Next time. Here, here, here's, to, here's, some here's some bacon grease. Here's some bacon grease. Just work it into that wound. Just oh, work Jesus. it in there. A little, little salt. Little salt. Yeah. There we go. Well, yeah. let's start with um, let's start with the first thing that it's over. But the uh, um, uh, the uh, thing I spent sixty dollars on. What was it? What's that called? Macro map. Macro mats. Yes. Yeah. The first day it went up. I'm like, well. That's sixty dollars spent because I need this real bad. Um, the, <laughs> the fat mats were always great for photos, but they were just a little too. I mean, they had sharp details, right? So, right. Um, it was good for photos, but these macro mats are designed specifically to take the focus and put it on the model, and that's why I picked up just the full set because. Uh, that is absolutely something I needed. Well, the full set is the way to go on the, in the Kickstarter. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, it's definitely under our, our, uh, MSRP, what our MSRP will be going forward. Plus basically if you buy the three mats, mm-hmm. you get the stand for free. Yeah, that was really and nice. I, bag and stuff like that, I, so. I didn't get the bag. I just gave you an extra $10. Um, I don't know. No, no, the bag, the bag comes with it. I mean, oh, the, it does. So, so let me, exp- I'll explain the, so the full set is it, we got a really nice bag and Todd will be doing an update mm-hmm. on, on the Kickstarter showing the images for it, mm-hmm. but it's pretty cool. So it, it's got two sections, one for the mats and the, and the bars, you know, the long bars. And then the other one with all the stand uh, pieces uh-huh. and stuff. So, and then it folds up and you got a nice little, you know, carry hand, hand carry um, handle kind of thing going on it. So that comes with it. That's just part of it. That's so great. you get this full stand, which is you can be 15 inches or 30 inch rod. Mm-hmm. So you could literally you could use your fat mats mm-hmm. with this stand, and okay. we've we've you know we've tested that. Um, of course, for the Kickstarter, we foc- we kept the focus on the actual photo mats. Right. I usually and set up some like role playing books or something, which is really annoying. So the stand will be really nice to have. Yeah, it's it's great, and then the the um, specific mats that we did are ones to really help make your your models pop. You know, really stand out in the photo. And everybody's using smartphones now, so you know all of our R and D with these mats and with the stands was I was using my iPhone. Yeah, which is so a great go, camera, to be honest. Which is which is a good camera. I mean, some <laughs> of the some of the uh, you know some of the hobby artists think that the you know the galaxy is better or whatnot, but it, they're all smartphones. They all yeah. have the same kind of focusing, um, mm-hmm. you know, way to focus. So it's really important to make sure your, your phone is focusing on your model and not, you know, the painting pot behind the model, right? The autofocus, the autofocus auto does make it tough, no matter what kind of background you have. And, uh, in, in, yeah well yes clearly and even my regular camera the camera i take good pictures with i am so unsophisticated that i i kind of just need that that mat for 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 the using that camera too because i don't know what i'm doing with the manual focus on that thing and the in the <laughs> freaking f stop and i'm like my f stop is 3.5 that means i'm getting this much of the distance blah 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 you with the fat mat you really don't have to worry so much about that you can just whip out your camera and take a picture if you pick the right mat you should have the right color you know the good thing about getting 
the full set for me was, you know, I do a lot of painting and it's not just orcs. Um, I have several armies that I work on all the time. So if you're like, uh, if you're uh, someone who does painting as a profession or as a hot or even as a hobby or, or just on the side, you know, you're doing all these different color schemes. You're going to want different backgrounds to take your pictures on. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the nice thing is the, you know, these mats are 15 by 30. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people that have the white boxes, these mats will fit in them as well. That's cool. Oh, nice. So That's really cool. We're going to, we're going to do a bunch of videos as soon as, as soon as we start, um, actually at the, at the, towards the end of this month, I'll be doing how to videos because I've, we've been getting a lot of questions through the Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. And one of the main ones is, is like, what, which lights work best for these mats? Mm -hmm. And I keep coming back natural lighting. Mm -hmm. You want that, especially when you're using like a, a smartphone mm -hmm. or anything with autofocus, the natural lighting is the best. Cause when you get, when you get spot lighting, you, your, your phone wants to, you know, highlight that, that bright spot, right? Cause now, now you're getting that, that hot light coming in at a certain direction and it's going to make the other part of your model dark. Mm -hmm. So you really want to have as much natural lighting as possible. Yeah. So, you know, I, t I tell a lot of people, I said, don't buy lights yet. Wait yeah. till you get the mats, play around with it with daylight yeah. and, and see what you think. Because, you know, there's enough natural light. If you get enough natural light, don't get any direct light on them. Yeah. But have natural light in the room and take yeah. the photos. It, it really, that's all you need. Yeah. And some people, some people with shaky hands, like I have a little bit of a shaky mm -hmm. hand syndrome sometimes. So I put, I put my phone on a little a holder uh -huh. and then I do the little timer for it. That way... I'm not hitting, you know, the, uh, yeah. the capture button while I'm shaking the camera. Cause that's, that's the one thing that keeps some people from having those crisp photos on their phone. Mm -hmm. Is it just a little bit of a shaky hand going? You're and absolutely that also right. works for normal, for, for your normal cameras, for your, like your DSL, mm -hmm. DSL, um, cameras is, you know, do the timer because then the, you're not going to have any kind of shakiness. And that will, you know, if you're, if you're, um, lens is doing all the auto focusing mm -hmm. it's gonna the, it's gonna stay you know the aperture is gonna stay open longer yeah so you don't want to shake you're you know you don't want any kind of shaking and shaking going on so i think I mean, people are gonna be pretty excited about it yeah um you know you're absolutely right and it, all my best photos have been with my camera when i have the timer on like i can actually tell the difference between when i capture the picture by pressing the button or when i capture the picture by pushing the button and waiting like the three seconds um and mainly i i do usually have and i don't want to scare people away with this i have the f-stop set where and the the uh, shutter speed set where it's 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 a pretty slow shutter speed, so uh, it's gonna sh it's gonna be wobbly no <laughs> no matter what I have to put on my my timer. Yeah. So you're absolutely right there. Um, one th one little piece of advice I think I would give to people is when you do test it outside, if you're like on your deck, face it away from your house, or if you're facing towards your house, your model's facing away, because um, if you have like a blue house or a yellow house, it's going to mess up the color of the picture. I have that problem sometimes when I take pictures near my pool. My pool was blue for a while, and that messed... <laughs> oh, my pictures came out blue. I'm like, why are these blue? Oh, my pool is blue. Right. <laughs> it's, the, you know, light reflects, yep. and everything, everything in the room Mm -hmm. you know is reflecting color um so it, it's 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 still you know the the phone focuses pretty well but you know like like you said you know play around with what angle you're doing it mm -hmm. you know i don't i don't go outside and do it with natural lighting i do it inside with all the windows open but no direct light on the model mm -hmm. right it's all natural lighting but it's you know it's all bouncing around in the room so it definitely matters Okay. You know, what what kind of colors you have going on there? Well, that's really exciting. I'm I'm really looking forward to to receiving these and and starting to I'm gonna I'm gonna immediately start taking pictures of some of my best models. See how how they come out. Um, it, how can people get the the uh, uh these new mats? Uh, right? Can they still go to the Kickstarter page or are they well, the, waiting the until kick, the, release? The Kickstarter's over, and you know this is this is our third Kickstarter. Uh -huh. It's kind of crazy to, think. <laughs> but yeah, we've had three Kickstarters now and we've, we've, you know, we've, we've stuck to our uh, timelines on all of them. You know, everybody gets their products pretty quick. So That's we're awesome. shooting, 
That's you know, everybody's great. everybody's going to get their their macro mass in February. That so is fantastic. Pretty quick. I mean, you know, we we started we started manufacturing before the Kickstarter was even done. Actually, we started before it even started because <laughs> <laughs> we were confident in it. You know, we 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 felt like, um, you know, I had already got samples back from you know the matte factory to mm -hmm. you know test the colors and stuff like that for the matte part especially. And then we fine tune the stands and the height because the stands adjustable. So the height's adjustable depending on how you want to do it. So you can have it down low. So a lot of your mat is underneath depending on, you know, because this isn't just for, you know, gamers and, you know, the, the, the hobbyists in the, in the tabletop community. We're, you know, we're, we're branching out. We're mm -hmm. going to collectibles, you know, people that just sell collectibles on eBay kind of thing. Mm. Um, you know, it's, it's going outside of the normal gaming community. To, to, oh, yeah. to hobbyists and craft people so we're right. pretty excited about that so we're going to have it on our website uh -huh. and uh we almost sold out of our first run uh -huh. just through the kickstarter that's fantastic so we so we we don't have a ton left but uh -huh. we, we are planning on bringing a small you know what we have with us uh to um lvo okay so we'll be selling them at lvo we're going to have some contests too which will be pretty fun um, we're going to have people come and, you know, take a picture with, you know, one of their models on it. And then we'll, we'll do like a little, little competition raffle type thing. Uh -huh. um, we'll, we'll give out details for that later. Awesome. Well, that's great. And you can check that out on Facebook, but where you can get them when they, you know, so they'll still, we're starting the next run already. So you will be able to order them on our website in the, in the first quarter here of, oh, great. of the new year. So, um, and that'll be on tablewar.com. And we have a new website, uh, tablewar.eu and tablewar.uk. Okay, that's good. That's good. So we have, you know, we, ha we have distribution in Europe as well. Excellent. Because you know, the miniature community and, and photography community uh, extends very much throughout Europe and, and, and England. So that's, that's, that's a great idea. Um, so, Doug, uh, speaking of LVO, uh, there... There's been some, I'm not going to lie, somewhat troubling rumors regarding uh, uh, your, your, your business partnership. Uh, how, what's going on with that, dude? Well, uh, we made the announcement, what has it been, a week now, mm -hmm. um, that uh, Frontline and uh, Table War will be uh, going their separate ways. So, you know, that was... That's a new shocking thing. Uh, I'm getting a lot of people asking me what's going on, but it's just, you know, it was, it's been three great years with mm -hmm. Frontline. Um, and, but now we're parting ways. Now, uh, uh, I, I know a lot of people are a little concerned because, you know, we, everybody knows the Fat Mat. You know, it's in the gaming community, it's a household name. And, and the designs are everybody. Everybody can tell the designs on the fat mats from just you, you look at them. And you know what you know what where they came from. You know they're they're a household product at this point. So right, they're very very iconic. I would say now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they are. Exactly. You know, you know who, you know what you're, you know what you have <laughs> when you have a fat mat on the table and you know the, the quality and everything like that. And I just, uh, you know, give, I just wanted to give you an opportunity to, uh, ensure or assure, assure our, our listeners that, uh, the, uh, you know, the line is going to continue and, and that, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're not going to go anywhere with the fat mats and, and, and with all your other great products. I mean, you've already kind of said, said that in the beginning here, but I don't know. It's it, when it, where it comes to the fat mats, it's a, it's an iconic, it's an iconic kind of product and, and everybody's kind of fully invested, I, I should say, in, in that product. Well, it's amazing. I mean, the, the community, uh, backed us when we did the Kickstarter. All right, so the the Fat Mat line is going to continue. Table War, you know, was the creator of it. It's the manufacturer of it. Nothing's changing there. It's the same manufacturing pipeline, mm -hmm. same creative artist. There's there's myself and two other uh, video game veterans that have been working with me since the beginning to do these maps. Um, you know, we have 38 plus designs. 
that everybody knows and loves and all of those will continue plus we'll be making more new ones uh, we have a cut we have three the three brand new ones in the pipe right now and they'll be people will see those before uh the first quarter that's is great. over of the, of the, of the part first of the year so you know things are going to be moving forward the only changes our customers are going to see is they're going to be buying it on tableward.com and tableward eu or tableward uk okay that's the only difference the customers will see also they'll also be seeing a price change um you know the with with not having that extra partner we're gonna you know pass that savings on to the customers so that's that's a pretty exciting thing that that todd my business partner here at table war and i are, are pretty excited about that's awesome now so you, you you are probably our, our customers have nothing to worry about it's going to keep going <laughs> that's awesome that's really good to hear doug um because uh you know as i said it's it's something that's really become you know a, a part of the community and and table war is a business that's been a part of the community for some time so um again you know uh, frontline gaming are definitely friend friends of the show and everything like that uh they're clearly fine and not going anywhere i just wanted to to make sure folks knew that this doesn't mean that uh every all the great stuff that they've been expect, expecting from you guys is is isn't gonna go away you know right right i mean we we we're parting ways uh Amitably, did I say that right? I'm having such a hard time with that word. That's so right. we, 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 you know, we we've split our our current stock, mm -hmm. and, you know, and they they're still selling what stock they have left of the fat mass until it's sold out. Okay. Um, and then they will they'll probably be selling some at, at the LBO, and you know, of course, they'll still be co covering all the tables with the fat mass at LBO. So you know, we're we're ending things friendly and and moving forward. You know, this great. is one product for Table War, and you know we're excited to let people know that you know this is, we, Table War's been around for five years now. We have patents. We've been developing for a while. You know yeah. the, the the amount of experience we have at Table War for developing, manufacturing, and creating art and products is you know over forty years worth of experience between me and Todd. So we're pretty confident we're gonna, you know, we're gonna keep pushing forward with, with the, uh, with the fat mat. Nothing's gonna change there. Just mm -hmm. where you go to buy it. Um, Excellent. And you can look forward to some really exciting new products coming out in the next year as well. So then, and, and the macro mat included in that. So that's and not even we're including. Continuing the line with the. Sorry. With the sorry. As well. So. That... No problem. That's awesome. So not just including new fat well, mats and and uh, and the macro mats, but you have some other designs in mind for the for the near future. Completely unique and new product line. Yeah. Excellent. We're working we're working hard on those. Excellent. Cool. We do a lot of R and D. We we you know it, it takes a while for us to plan. You know we want to get it right. Mm -hmm. So. You know, look look into that. We'll we'll probably do another Kickstarter. We've had pretty good success with Kickstarter so far. It's it's nice to know as we're developing something that there's you know that excitement. So yeah. uh, and I love bringing people on to where they feel like you know they're part of helping develop something too. Yeah, you know, I'm a big nerd. I'm 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 making I'm making I'm making products that I want to play with. <laughs> so <laughs> you know, it's, you know, if, if there's people out there that also enjoy that same thing, I mean, I'm it's just it makes my day. I'm, yeah. it's, I, I still get giddy when I see friends posting photos with a fat mat on their table. You know, mm -hmm. it still just makes me happy. I don't know how to explain it. Really. No, you, you created something feeling. and sent and it I, out. And, I, and I'm proud. You created Go something ahead. and sent it out into the world and, and people love it. And that's got to be great, a great feeling for anybody who creates anything, you know? It's fun. I, I'm not going to lie. It's, it's pretty exciting. <laughs> you know, I've been doing, I guess, yeah. Who was I talking to just the other day? You know, I, I was a professional artist at 10 years old hmm. and I'm really old now. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was, I was, I was selling oil paintings at, at fairs at, when I was 10. Oh, that's awesome. So, that's awesome. I, I, I didn't um, sell paintings, but I was definitely, I was in 4-H when I was a kid and I, I was, you know, one of those nerdy kids. I didn't have any cows or horses or anything. I just, I did the arts and crafts. So I did, I did, uh, the, uh, art and I did, uh, photography and all that fun stuff. It's, it's good for a kid to get into the arts and, you know, STEM is great and all, but 
nothing there's nothing like the arts for you know expanding your uh, uh, and eliminating your preconceived notions about the universe well and it's just a new age too Mm-hmm. You know, me growing up, my dad was always against the art thing. He's like, you'll never make money at that, you know, kind of got to get a real job. <laughs> but, you know, that's definitely changed. I mean, I, you know, I was in the video game industry for 15 years. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that, that was a real job. <laughs> I had a 401k, everything. Yeah. You know, times have changed. You know, yeah. let me just look at the celebrity type feeling people have on you know twitter now and that's a career for them yeah. and you know if you explain that to my my dad he'd be like what people <laughs> watch somebody else play video games and they pay for it <laughs> that's crazy what the hell <laughs> you know it's just it's a new age yeah. and and i love how creative it is yeah it's just it's exciting so i'm, I'm pretty i'm pretty proud of it i'm pretty proud of uh you know, all my friends that are doing creative things and making careers from it. It's just an awesome thing to see. So, you know, I, I go out there and I support it and I'm, I'm just humbled when people mm-hmm. support me and my creativity. So it's pretty amazing thing. That's awesome, dude. That's good to hear. Well, um, unless do you have anything else to, uh, to discuss or plug before we go, Doug? Cause it's, it's been a nice conversation. If, I hate if, to... if, if... Go ahead. If you don't mind, I'd like to plug another Kickstarter. Go for uh, it. David from uh, Mini Wargaming is uh, doing a Kickstarter for his full-length feature movie called The Ranger's Bloodstone. Oh, yeah. Oh, cool. And speaking of supporting yeah, creative that. minds and, and creativity, you know, I just would say, you know, if your supporters are, are into supporting the arts, please, please go to that Kickstarter and uh, help David out. Uh, you know, get one of his, make one of his dreams come true. He did a, he did a short film for it already. You can check it out. It's, it's really cool. And I, I, it's, it's getting, I think he's got 15 days left. So, you know, every, every little bit helps. So what's it, what's it called again, Doug? The Rangers Bloodstone. The Rangers Bloodstone. All right, cool. Yeah. Yeah. I remember him talking about his, uh, his uh, short feature that he did and he, he seemed to really have a great time doing it. And, I, I love that guy. He's so great. I'd love to play a game with him someday. We're pretty close, uh, but it's tough to get to sneak in a, a a game up there, Mini War Gaming, because they're so popular. But I definitely have to get up there sometime, do a narrative game with them, maybe get some cross imagination yeah. with the podcast. Yeah, they've got a narr- They've got that one narrative game going now too. That's pretty cool. Oh they they got the walled thing. That's pretty. That's pretty cool. They've been doing some I, amazing I, I lo- things. I, I, yeah, I love checking you guys out with your narratives and stuff. It's oh, so thanks. awesome when you guys did the when you guys did yours. It was just so cool. Thanks, it man. Makes me jealous. I need to. I need to do more narrative stuff. Yeah, and I need to learn to crush face a little bit better there, Doug. So. <laughs> <laughs> so we should work together, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Well, I did well, just up, a, you know, as, go ahead. Uh, sorry, just an update on the Kickstarter for um for the Rangers, or what, are, or what it's called. Um, Mini Wargaming sent an email this afternoon, and one of their new perks is if you donate three hundred dollars for the Kickstarter, that they'll actually give you a lifetime Vault membership. Oh, that's amazing! That's yeah, that great. just came through my email about three hours ago, and I was like. Well, uh, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's nice. Huge. That is yeah. nice. I'm a vault. So, member. if our listeners are interested and are really into the mini war gaming and whatnot, and feel like dropping, I think it was three hundred dollars. Please do. That's pretty great. That's a great. That's a great thing. Yeah. Why not? We, yeah. What are you going to spend it on? Seriously. What are you going to? Seriously. You're going to buy your kids Lifetime. another present that another toy that they're going to get sick of in a month, anyways. Little giant doesn't need to go to college. <laughs> no, well, don't seriously. jump, Minimal, don't dip Minimal, into Minimal the college Minimal. fund. <laughs> All those toys, it just causes ADD. I mean, come on, stay minimal. <laughs> uh, they can enjoy that. They can enjoy that membership as well as they grow older. That's right. Lifetime. <laughs> yeah. So you know, when my Alzheimer's kicks in, you know, my son Ashton can still be on mini war gaming. It's it's, it's it's like season tickets. It's like season tickets for the New York Yankees. You you pass it exactly. on from from father to daughter to son. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, and Doug. they've got so much content that is that is such a oh, good yeah. deal too. Oh, they yeah, have I so can't. much content. It's yeah. unreal from hobby stuff to the battle reports. It's it's amazing. Yeah, yeah I just watch the narrative reports. Just mm-hmm. I, that's I've been up here in my office working. I always have those running while I do other yeah, stuff. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. Great stuff. <laughs> All right, Doug. Well, that was that was mighty that was mighty fine. He had to mention that, and uh, we'll be sure to keep plugging that actually. But uh, let be sure to come back and let us know when you're doing more exciting things. It doesn't have to be 40k related. Uh, you're a friend of the show. He's welcome here. Yes. Well, 30k related too. I've been playing so much, today, but yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you guys for having <laughs> me on again. And I'm uh, I can come and ramble anytime you need to fill some time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool, dude. We'll talk to you later. Thanks again, guys. Peace. Hey, thanks. Hey, everyone. This is Justin from the It Will Not Die podcast. If you love listening to podcasts that are positive and excited about the hobby, come check us out. We're on the Freebooters Network now, along with other great podcasts like The Independent Characters, 40K Radio, D6 Generation, Nerd Herders, and many more. And remember, it doesn't matter how you love the hobby, just do it. Nailed it. Do you play more than one mini war game? Or do you like listening to shows which discuss other games and pan hobby topics? Combat Phase is a weekly podcast covering the whole hobby for gamers. We also interview a lot of Black Library authors. Join Kenny and Robert as they try to grow the hobby. Combat Phase, the best part of the game, is on iTunes and www.combatphase.com. So I guess that's it for episode 60. Do we say four? Do we side it's 64? I thought it was 66. Or 76. Oh, 76. Oh, great. We're both (laughs) way off. Okay. We're professionals, (laughs) ladies and gentlemen. There we go. There we go. That's it for episode 76. Uh, So um, keep, keep, uh, keep an eye on, on, on on our feed for next week's uh, release. Keep an eye on our feed for all the interesting things we're talking about on Facebook. Um, check out Twitter, uh, Twitter and check out our, um, a website, masters of the forge.com. Uh, we haven't had a lot of, uh, us generated content lately, but that's all on there if you're interested and, uh, uh, keep listening and, uh, let us know what kinds of things you'd like to see in the future. Uh, but until then play the game the way you want to. Good. Nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, nailed it. Yeah. Well done. This podcast is protected by the Creative Commons Attribution No Derivatives Non Commercial International License. More information about this license and contact information if you have any requests can be found at our blog, mastersoftheforge.com. The music used in this podcast was made by Podod of the duo Sublevel 3. The track is used with his permission. It's such a good feeling to play games your way it's such a happy feeling 40 king away and when you throw dice with story in mind it's such a wonderful way to unwind it's a good feeling a very good feeling the feeling you know that we'll be back when the fortnight's new and we'll have new ideas for you and you'll have things you'll want to talk about we will too